Hello everyone, my name is Milena Sergeyenko and I'm a localization business manager at Alex, the company that does software localization and development services. We are a specialized in technologically complex localization projects in software and in particular games industry. I'm glad you are all here and we can start. I'm happy to present today the first webinar of Games Localization webinar series. The series will cover major aspects of games adaptation from technical to linguistic and testing sides. As we all know, localization foresees cultural, language, technical adaptations. It is a complex process requiring various specialists from artists, designers, linguists, uh, to engineers and developers. Today we will concentrate on technical aspects and uh, I would like to present my colleagues Igor Gnatyuk and Andrei Lutsuk uh, who are the senior localization engineers at our department. They will show us the most frequent issues uh, you can face during games adaptation. Uh, without considering such issues it can be difficult to ship perfect localized product to the customers on, on time and within the budget. Um, I don't want to spend much time for introduction, just to mention some regulations. Uh, it would be great if any questions will appear, but we would be very appreciated if you could just chat them in the GoToWebinar chat tool to the presenter so that uh, we could try to give you the answers at the end of our session. If the question will require additional investigation on our side, we will gladly reply you via email. Well, nothing prevents us to start our webinar now. I just need to give the space to the guys. Igor, you're honored to begin. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Igor Ognatuk localization engineer for Alex, and today we're going to talk about games localization. Uh, Andrew will help me with demonstrations, so let's start. Today's presentation will focus on technical questions touching the issues of internationalization, which normally runs prior to localization. This is where it needs to make sure that the game will support localization and all our efforts are not in vain. To make our webinar more interesting and interactive, I took two open source games as examples, because all our commercial projects are under NDA. In this first example, I will show you how my team faces internationalization issues and how we solve them. In the second one, we will see typical localization bugs and their solutions. This is our typical localization project workflow. We start from analysis through internationalization Preparation for translation, or in other words, um, localization kit creation, translation, engineering, and to localize build testing and release. Let us focus at the moment on the first three stages. Okay, let's take a look at our first example, XNA Racing Game. It's a game developed by Benjamin Nitschke on XNA platform as a tutorial for beginner game developers. XNA is a Microsoft platform for games development for Windows, Xbox, and Windows Phone. This game is compiled for PC, but could be easily moved for Xbox, for example. Anyway, it's good enough to use it as an example for hands-on demonstration of localization process. Now we're showing you an English version. As you can see, all game UI is in English. Mm, we have a uh, test race here. Okay, let's go back to the other menu to see that it's all localized. Uh, I'm sorry, English. Okay, let's, let's exit. <clears throat> we have seen our racing game, and now we can move to the analysis stage. So, first I'm looking for all the in-game text that needs to be translated. These can be resource files or pre-rendered text in the images. Now, let's take a look at the folder with these images. Here we go. Here we can see different content folders. 
The important one for us from localization point of view in this example is a texture folder because all the localizable text contains in the images. As you can see, the textures are compiled in XNA binary files. What does it mean? It means, it means that we won't be able to extract anything from them. So I took the source code to see original resource files. In this folder, all textures are in common graphical formats and we can review or edit them easily. Here we have our game logo, buttons from menu, game font, some headers, and so on. But how we can make sure that all game text is included into these textures? One of the approaches to ensure we have all the text that needs localization is to create the mock build. Mock build it is a pseudo-translated version of the original build. It is a good way to analyze product for possible localization and internationalization issues, such as hard-coded strings, UI, uh, control bounds issues, or translations, functional exceptions, etc. In addition, this will reduce further efforts and costs for localization. What is the process of pseudo-translated build creation in our case? In our example, we deal with textures, so we need to reconstruct the source files of the textures in any graphical editor in order to separate text from the image itself. In our case, we have done it with Adobe Photoshop and prepared PSD files with text layers, which can be easily imported into CSV files. Okay, here we go. This is our original texture. And now we're going to create the pseudo-translated build from this texture. To include textures into our game, we need to compile them to X and B format. We will do it with a tool, which we developed by ourselves. After compilation, we will need to copy it into the, our game folder. Let's do it. This is our compiler tool. Here we can have a folder. Take a little bit and, and this is our updated textures. Now we should copy them to our game folder. Content textures. Mm -hmm. Good. So now we should test our game in order to make sure that all the strings were processed. Let's not launch it. Okay, this is called mock build. Here we can already see some truncation issues. We should pay attention to this because further localized strings can be longer than English source. So it, be, it would be great to have all control bounds externalized to fix such issues. But here we can see strings without any additional symbols. This indicates that these strings are hard-coded. It means that they are coming from the code. Okay. At this point, we have finished the analysis and we are moving to internationalization. We have found hard-coded strings in the code and collected them in the XML file. Also, we had to refactor a small part of code to read the strings from XML. Another important thing is that it turned out that the values for measurements were not externalized either. In our country, the speed is measured in kilometers per hour, and hardly anyone knows miles. We updated the formula of speed calculation from miles to kilometers directly in the code. As I mentioned before, we also externalized the coordinates and dimensions of controls that display the in-game text. 
Phones for displaying the strings are another pain in the neck. The font used was a raster font. As it didn't support full extended character set, which includes Cyrillic symbols, we had to use a workaround in this specific case. And again, we refactored the code a little. We will talk about this in the second example. After all these changes are implemented, the internationalization phase is done, and we have reached the preparation step. At this point, we can start gathering all required resources for translation. In other words, localization kit building. What is this? These are the resources, resources specifications, tools, project scopes, etc. It also contains various customers' recommendations, like phones to be used, images to be left in English, and so on. Why do we need all this stuff in this forum? Because it simply makes localization engineers' life easier from the start. The project manager is able to come up with a more precise estimate and further track the scope. At this point, linguists are waiting for us to prepare all the localizable stuff for translation. Forgive me my arrogance here, but that's where our work is a key to success. It's simply important to collect everything so that the testers won't chase you in a week before the release. Good localization kit should have a strict structure. I recommend keeping all kit file types in different folders. If you have time to write a short instruction how to work with each of them, do it. The calculation based on localization kit is much easier. That's the job of our project managers. As you remember, we have extracted hard-coded strings into XML, and now these strings should be prepared for translators in the acceptable file formats. This acceptable form is part of the translation kit, together with the translation memory, term database, style guides, and so on. Also, the preparation includes adding comments for each string with specific nodes, such as maximum characters or context description, which will help translators to correctly render the meaning of the strings. For this purpose, there are some specific tools, such as SDL Pasolo, Alchemy Catalyst, Multilizer, etc. We are using in our demo the SDL Pasolo just for, as example. For demonstration, we have prepared the project in Pasolo containing all the files for translation. With this tool, you can parse most of the resource file types, such as DLL, XML, RC, and so on. I have added CSV files, which we extracted earlier from PSD Photoshop files. Remember this? We print translated them for the demonstration. Here are source strings, translated strings, and proper comments. And finally, we need to generate these translated resources. Let's generate it. It was the older one. Now we generate the new one. Good. Here we go. This is our translated CSV files. And now now I think we need to show our guest the XML file, Andrew, how I think. Mm -hmm. And yes, here we go. This is our generated XML file. Now let's take a look at generated... <laughs> no. Now we will show you the process of making localized textures from source PSD file and translated CSV file. Andrew, what are we doing now? Uh, now I uh, try to translate some string by importing CSV files uh, in Photoshop. Uh, here I have prepared uh, PSD files, uh, for example, buttons uh, here, all in English text, and now I going to localize them by import our uh, generated CSV file. Uh, 
we will generate them uh, translated to sources CSV and here our uh, buttons okay apply and here fully localized uh, texture for our menus. Uh, let's save uh, it into our PNG format and uh, go next part of our demonstration. Okay, I think we wouldn't create all the PNGs because the creation of translated uh, textures is pretty time consuming. Um, so we have prepared some of them in advance. <clears throat> uh, Andrew, let's take a look at our translated PNGs. Oh, good. Okay, <clears throat> here our game logo. It's not a usual practice to translate logos, but we decided to do it. As you can, <clears throat> as we can, so earlier we translated fonts, adjust, uh, adjusted fonts, translate headers, and, well, all text has translated here, as you can see. <clears throat> okay. Uh, to produce the localized version, we need to compile these images to X and B once again. This is where, this is, uh, wouldn't be mock build, but fully localized Russian build. And again, we're, we're using our magic tool. Okay, good. We have updated XMB files. Now let's copy them into the game folder. Yes. One more. Wait, one more second. Good. Also, I think we need to also import our XML translated file. Mm -hmm. This is our translated file. Good. I think our game is fully localized now. So let's launch it once again. Oh, thanks God, it works. So, as we can see here, our game is fully localized. All text, all pictures, all hard-coded strings that was extracted. Here also you can see that our measurements are converted to kilometers per hour. We can make a test drive. And please uh, take a look at the car identical plate. We have redesigned it a little bit. It's a small commercial here. I'm just joking. Okay, so we have not shown in details all the changes we did in the code to make the game ready for localization. But uh, because, you, uh, because as you understand, it is not a matter of minutes and lines of code will just confusing you. With this, we are finishing our, the preparation phase. Let's sum, sum up what we need to check before starting the translation. First of all is we need to check if we have all text externalized. Second, is there any text in the images? Next one is to check if we have some measurements in the game. Also, it would be great to have external geometric features of all controls. And finally, we need to check fonts. These are the main points which we should pay attention to. The process of localization won't be complex if all the preparation stages are done carefully. At this point, we are moving to the second game to show you the next stages of localization project. We are skipping the translation stage now as it's another huge topic that cannot be covered within one webinar. In this example, we will focus generally on engineering work with localization and internationalization issues, which can be found during the testing process after the translation of the game resources. Okay, 
Let's take a look now at another example. It's the game Zero AD. Zero AD is an open source historical real-time strategy game currently under development by Wildfire Games, a global group of volunteer game developers. Game engine is mostly written in C++ and uses JavaScript engine for scripting. It also uses such open source libraries as OpenGL. The game is cross-platform, supporting Windows, Linux, OS X, and various Unix-like operating systems. The developers foresaw the possibility to add user modifications in an easy way. Localization can be considered as a kind of this modification. Let's assume we have already passed the first four project stages of our workflow. Analysis, internationalization, preparation, and translation. We now have all the strings translated and have mastered our first translated into Russian build. Let's quickly recall what kind of issue we can face. First one is internationalization. It means if a game is ready for localization into target language, this includes regional standards, fonts, etc. And we, uh, we can have problems with that. The next one is functional. Mainly, such type of errors occur if game functionality is not or badly separated from localizable resources. Just imagine that one little over-translated string can crash the whole game. And usually, it takes a huge amount of time to find out which resource is responsible for this. The last one is geometric issues. They relate to all UI elements which contain localized text. In 9 of 10 cases, localized text is a bit longer than original, and because of this, we will get the overlappings, clipping, and other types of untidy user interface. No one wants to show the, to the final user this kind of localization. Okay, enough of the boring slides. Let's take a look at our game. Mm, good game. Here you can see the game starting screen with menu panel, dialog and the tilty field. In the right top corner of the screen. To demonstrate the possible issues, we will simulate the localization of main screen to get all case described in the last presentation slide. To save time for the demonstration, we have analyzed the game folder content earlier. First, what we have no noticed is that user interface elements are separated from the binary files and are contained in this zip file. This archive contains such subfolders as art, the folder with textures in direct draw image format. We found out that there were no textures to be localized, but if there were, I'll, we would have passed them to graphic specialists for further processing. Next one is audio, the folder obviously containing the game sounds. Uh, next one is fonts. This is the folder with pre-rendered textures and fonts used for displaying the text. Each texture has a supporting file in FNT format. It contains the info on texture, the version, number of symbols in texture, sizes and coordinates of each symbol. The last one is GUI. That's the folder with user interface elements. Strings from the main menu of the game are located in main menu XML. Here, here this, is, this is our XML. As you can see, the interface text and all UI styles and geometry are extracted in XML file and there are no difficulties for editing them. For demonstration, we have prepared the translated XML file. Let's back up our original file to a desktop, since we have a feeling that we will need it in the future. And now we will import localized XML into game folder. Okay, this is our localized file. Just drag and drop it. Okay, wait a minute. I thought 7 zip works faster. Come on. Where 
almost there. Oh, super easy. Okay, let's launch our game now and see what we got. Uh, mm, looks like this is not exactly what we expected to get. <laughs> Good, okay. Now we have three issues on the screen. The first one, the main screen background is missing. Really? Hmm. Second, translated strings displayed as question marks. Mm, not very beautiful. And the last one, third, truncated buttons on dialog in the right lower corner of the game menu. The first issue is a functional issue. Usually, it means that we localize something that we should not. Fixing that type of issues, as a rule, takes a huge amount of time. In our case, we have imported only one localized file, and it will be easy to find the problem area. But if we had a big number of localized resources, it would become a real problem to find what causes the issue. To fix this bug, we need to compare, to compare both files, translated and original. Here we can see that the main menu page object has an over-translated action tick. Let's revert it back to English and import the XML file again. Okay, now we're reverting it. Save, yes, no, yes, no, okay. Looks, looks familiar for me. I hope it will be faster. Oh, yeah, much faster. Oh, super. Okay, let's launch our game once again. Hmm, great. One issue is fixed. Still to our left. Second issue is that the game does not support the extended character set. This is a typical issue of internationalization. The reason is most often. Either the limitations of game engine, for example, when reading data from XML, there is a limitation on characters read. In this case, the problem should be escalated to game developers, as it is difficult to solve it by localization engineers. Or the fonts used do not contain the necessary characters. This problem is easier to solve, usually by editing fonts in, and, in our case, textures. Based on the second assumption about the fonts, let's see what we have in the fonts folder. As you remember, the fonts folder contains the textures in PNG format and supporting in font characters. Yes, yes, this is our textures. This is our fonts. If we know the format of supporting files, we can recreate the font textures, which will contain the needed characters. In our case, we are using the script written on Python, which uses the graphical library carrier. Okay, I think we need to show it. Yes, this is our Python script. Um, based on the TTF and OTV fonts and the text file charset.txt, this script generates the required textures and supporting files. We have added to the charset.txt the required modifications, like this. As a result, we get the set of new textures with the required set of symbols. Let's start the script. I hope it's pretty quick. Yes, good. We have our updated, updated fonts. Now let's install the updated fonts and see what we've got. I hope it will be quickly too. I don't know how you think. Mm -hmm. We're updating our fonts. Oh, pretty quick. Okay, now let's launch our game. Perfect. The second issue is fixed, and we can move to the last issue with buttons truncation. Let's come back to the previously imported XML file with translations for the main menu. 
it presents no difficulties to find the part responsible for this dialog. In addition, the developers externalized geometrical data of dialogues together with the text. This means they can be easily edited. However, it's worth remembering that this dialog is used in two occurrences. By changing both values, we'll get a localized dialog without the localization box. This can be done directly in XML file or another localization tool. Yes, we have increased the width of our dialog, and now we need to import or updated XML file again to the game folder. Good, I hope now we're starting the very good build. Okay, as a result of all these fixes, we got the game interface that we expected at the start of this example. So, let's move to conclusions from this example and summarize the main issues we face it. First and most important is the fact that developers should separate functional part of the game from UI in order not to break the logic of the game during internationalization. The game and geometry data of controls need to be externalized together in the resources. It is recommended that these resources are not editable by end users. At the same time, localization engineers should have the necessary tools for editing them. Think in advance about regional settings, fonts, and special characters display. When forming localization kit, it is worth noting that one word can have different meanings in other language. Hence, each string needs to be included separately with the corresponding comments. The examples we have demonstrated to you have not been large projects games. But I hope they have given you the idea of what needs to be taken into consideration in order a game can be localized without too much pain for engineers. Okay, thank you. And now I give a word to, back to Vilena. Thank you, Igor. Um, the examples we showed today do not touch translation aspects of the game. Um, in the first webinar series, we try to show only the technical side of the medal and uh, translation and testing and further game localization peculiarities uh, we will try to cover in the next webinars. Thank you for your attention and for attending our webinar. I hope it has been useful for you. Uh, the next webinar will show the tricks of parallel testing uh, of the games and um, this is a new approach in testing which allows to reduce costs for testing and gain more quality of course. I hope to see you all at our next presentation uh, due in the beginning of August. Thank you.